Japan is playing against Brazil in the U15 tournament. Brazil is leading 2-1 in the 46th minute of injury time. Japan is under a lot of pressure while Brazil is constantly attacking. Suddenly, Aizawa Suguru appears to intercept the ball. He is known as the king of the field. Japan's number 10, Suguru, continues to dribble and attack, then makes a pass. His teammate successfully receives the ball, but the shot is not successful. The ball bounces back, and Suguru appears to shoot immediately, equalizing for Japan. Kakaru has witnessed all of his brother's performances. At Kamakura Junior High School, Kakaru is performing puppet shows for everyone about his brother's performance when Suguru kicks the ball at his head. Suguru wants his brother to focus on management and stop being stupid. Kakaru used to play soccer as a striker, and his friends want him to play soccer again and quit his job as a manager. Kakaru says that even if the world is turned upside down, he still can't be as good as his brother, so if his brother is still a player, Kakaru will still be a manager. His dream is to see his brother play in the World Cup. He will become his brother's manager and coach. Suddenly a girl appears and talks to Kakaru. She used to be in the same class as Kakaru. Her name is Seven. Seven realizes that Suguru hasn't changed at all. She also advises Kakaru to play soccer again. She wants the team to have both brothers. Kakaru says that he still loves soccer, but before he can say why, Seven rushes to the teacher's office. Seven says that she has also become a manager, so she wants them to help each other. Seven transferred to Kakaru's class. Her real name is Miss Himanana. All the boys in the class were very excited about this and saw her as a goddess. The members were quite jealous when Kakaru knew Nana. Kakaru explained that he was childhood friends with her. When he was in elementary school, she played the forward position. She played with the Aizawa brothers. Seven is the name that Kakaru called instead of Nana. When she was young, Nana looked very tall and boyish, but in the summer of fifth grade, Nana's family moved to America. Everyone broke up from that moment. That night, Kakaru planned to go out and was asked by Suguru. Kakaru lied that he wanted to buy something at the convenience store. Suguru was angry because Kakaru always ran away. Suguru didn't know since when Kakaru became like that. Luckily, their younger sister saw and intervened. Kakaru didn't actually go to the convenience store and practice soccer. He didn't remember how long he hadn't played soccer, and he didn't remember since when he had played soccer alone in the park at night. He fired a shot and was caught by a masked stranger. Kakaru didn't know who this person was, but the masker dribbled past him at a very fast speed. He provoked Kakaru in a one-on-one -on -one match. He dribbled the ball towards Kakaru's left foot, making Kakaru unable to get the ball. He realized that the opponent knew that he couldn't use his left foot, and Kakaru couldn't get the ball the next time either. He didn't know who the opponent was, but playing soccer was indeed the happiest thing. After a while, Kakaru was tired, and the masker left. The next day, Kakaru asked some of his teammates what they did last night but couldn't find anything. The main selection match began. Kota was the first to be called for the striker position. Kakaru was called, surprising everyone. Kakaru didn't know why he was chosen. It turned out that Suguru had decided this. Kakaru still wanted to continue being a manager, but Suguru knew that Kakaru couldn't give up football completely, and that was also the reason why he became a manager. Kakaru knew that he really didn't want to run away, so he decided to play. The members split into two teams for a practice match. Kakaru was on the same team as Suguru. Kakaru was locked in. Nana saw and understood the position and situations on the field. Yusuke faced Suguru. After a fake move, Suguru won. Then there was a long pass to Kakaru, but he failed to shoot. Suguru said that Kakaru received the ball too hard and that he should have been able to predict such a pass. Then there was another pass from his brother, but he still failed. Nana knew that pass was impossible for anyone to catch, except Kakaru. The senior told Kakaru to rest, but Kakaru wanted to continue. Nana guessed that Suguru would continue to make such passes and Kakaru would definitely do it because his eyes said so. Indeed this time, Kakaru caught the pass from Suguru. He shot but suddenly switched to his right foot. Suguru saw it with a displeased expression. Nana saw that Kakaru had changed his kicking feet, so the goalkeeper had enough time to prepare to catch the ball. If he had used his left foot, he would have definitely scored. Everyone knew that Kakaru had great speed and technique, but if he couldn't shoot, he couldn't score. That's why Kakaru was known as Mr. No Goal. Another pass, Kakaru wanted to score and shot with his left foot, but this time the ball went up in the air. Suguru wanted Kakaru to go back to the bench and do his job as a manager. Kakaru was quite disappointed with himself. Nana encouraged him for playing well. She knew that his brother wanted to say the same thing. The practice session ended, and the seniors knew that Suguru had made a difficult pass to Kakaru. If Kakaru could really score from that pass, 
he could definitely play for the national team. Dana knew that Suguru let Kakaru play because Kakaru was the only one who could receive his difficult passes. However, Suguru said that even if Kakaru could receive his passes but he couldn't score, it was useless to try. Suguru said that Kakaru didn't lack technique and stamina, what he lacked was heart. This was the reason why Kakaru avoided using his left foot. Although Suguru wanted to make Kakaru play for a change, things didn't go as Suguru expected. Nana found out that Kakaru had heard everything. Kakaru also acknowledged that Suguru was right and left sadly. In the evening, Kakaru continued to practice at the park. The masker also came. The two also had a practice session together. Then they both took a break because soccer in junior high school is only 30 minutes. Kakaru said that when he was in elementary school, he seriously injured another player because of his left foot kick. Since then, he was afraid to use his left foot. The masker pointed at Kakaru's heart, making him remember what his brother said. Then the masker left. Kakaru went home and questioned his brother. Luckily, his sister stopped them. Kakaru returned to his room and was very angry about this. In the morning, his bicycle got a flat tire. Suguru came, but Kakaru decided to run to school. This was exactly how the two brothers used to do it when they were young. He also apologized to his brother about yesterday. Kakaru told his brother that he wanted to free himself from his chest, withdraw from the soccer club, and want to give it up. No matter what, he still wanted his brother to try, wanted his brother to stand on the field like a king because he loved his brother's way of playing soccer. Suguru said, if the conductor is the king of the field, then the striker is the knight, who can receive passes. Suddenly a truck rushed straight towards the two boys. Suguru rushed to hug Kakaru. Nana passed by and saw this scene. Both brothers were in critical condition. The families of the two brothers also received the news from Nana. All the members of the team were also shocked to know this. They caught the surgery. After completing the surgery, the doctor informed the parents of the two brothers. Suguru was determined to be brain dead. The mother of both still did not believe this was true. The doctor wanted to ask them if they would let Suguru donate his organs to Kakaru. Kakaru began to gradually regain consciousness. He did not know where he was. Nana was very happy that Kakaru was awake. Yuyusuke and Koda also came to visit Kakaru. They wanted Kakaru to quickly return to the club. Kakaru said that he had decided to quit the club and had talked to Suguru about it. He also wanted to see his brother soon. The doctor came in. She was a psychiatrist named Mayan Ayaka. She asked him to calm down and listen to her. She said that Suguru had died in an accident. Hearing that, Kakaru became agitated. He still wanted to see his brother. Mayan slapped him in the face. She thought that he was ruining the life his brother had given him. Kakaru could only despair at this. He was able to continue living thanks to Suguru's heart. Two months later, Kakaru was starting to recover strongly. He was also going to be discharged tomorrow. His mental state was also stable now. Everything was going smoothly. Then Kakaru returned to his normal life. He went to class. Everyone was happy that he had fully recovered. He still gave Kunamatsu his withdrawal request. Kunamatsu accepted it, but he reminded Suguru that he wanted to become an international player, representing Japan, and he also wanted Kakaru to return to the club at any time as a striker. Kakaru still saw his brother on the soccer field. Then Kakaru and Nana went to the hospital. This time his heart had completely adapted to his body. However, Dr. Mine had a request for Nana. If she noticed anything different about Kakaru, she had to tell her right away. Then both Kakaru and Nana visited Suguru's grave and saw Leonardo Silva, the Brazilian U15 champion. Kakaru didn't know what he was doing here and also wanted to get his autograph. Silva also knew that Kakaru was Suguru's younger brother. He greeted him in Japanese. Silva said that his brother was his rival as well as his friend and that he had heard Suguru refer to Kakaru as the ideal knight in the area. Kakaru said that he was probably wrong. That night, Kakaru went to the park to play soccer alone, and the masker appeared again. Kakaru asked the masker what he wanted. The masker didn't say anything and rushed to steal the ball. This time Kakaru used his left foot to kick the ball. He heard the girl's voice and the mysterious masked person was Nana. She apologized to him and said that Kakaru had just used his left foot for a wonderful volley. Nana said that before moving back to Japan, she met Suguru again after the match with Mexico. At that time, Nana learned that Kakaru was working as a manager. Suguru asked Nana for a favor. He knew that Kakaru often practiced secretly in the park, so he asked her to come practice with Kakaru. Nana said that Kakaru's current heart was Suguru's, so this heart currently contains Suguru's unfinished dream. Nana didn't want Kakaru to give up soccer. Kakaru could only run away when he heard that. When he got home he could only cry. He also discovered his brother's diary. Suguru still wished for a night in the area. He wrote his dream in the diary that morning. During a match, he realized there's no one else around. 
He called but no one responded. But suddenly he saw Kakaru, the only one who could receive his pass. Kakaru scored. The two brothers happily lifted the championship trophy together. Kakaru cried a lot after reading the diary. The next morning Kakaru started practicing soccer again. Nana came and saw it. Kakaru decided not to run away anymore and would fulfill the dream of the two brothers. Nana was very touched by this. He then showed Suguru's diary to Nana. His brother also mentioned Araki Ryuichi inside. Suguru once felt that Araki's passes were better than his. Araki was a great player with unique passes that could be made from any position, nicknamed by everyone as improvisation. Kakaru wanted to go to the school where Araki was studying, because a knight needs a king. Nana also wanted to study with Kakaru. Today was the entrance ceremony of Inoshima High School. Kakaru and Nana went to school. They were both looking forward to meeting Araki. There were many clubs recruiting members. A student heard them talking about soccer and escorted them to the club right away. His name was Hayoto Makoto. Kakaru asked about Araki and mentioned his great passes. Makoto admits that it is difficult to receive those passes. In class, the two are surprised to see Koda, who also chose this school. The homeroom teacher arrives. The entrance ceremony takes place. An obese student appears. He invites them to his manga club and says that the soccer club is boring. They refuse and go to the soccer field. Kakaru wonders why there are no seniors here and the candidates are taking the entrance exam. The obese student comes and says that passing the ball with the heel is not allowed here, dribbling for no more than 5 seconds, and height must not be less than 1.75 meters. Nakoto's group comes and kicks the ball straight at the obese student and asks him to be a sea lion. Then the obese student returns the ball to Makoto, and they start doing stupid things. Kakaru and Nana are confused and shocked to learn that this obese student is Araki. Araki recognizes Kakaru as Suguru's younger brother. The homeroom teacher comes and explains that there are two soccer clubs in this school. One is the representative of Inishima High, called FC Club. The other is FC Club, they are the play for fun in Ishima High Football Club. Sensei congratulates them both on joining the FC Club, which shocks Kakaru to the point of fainting. Kakaru asks permission to withdraw his application because he wants to join the official club. Sensei says that SC Club is a boring place, playing soccer to win trivial matches, showing how small Japan is compared to the world. FC Club plays soccer with the goal of winning the World Cup. This year there will be a match between FC and SC, and the winner will be the school's representative club. A student just failed the entrance exam to SC club, so he comes to apply for FC club. His name is Metoba Karu. Kakaru realizes that his heart is beating and decides to join this club. The club has 11 members. The match will be played in two weeks. Kakaru went to find Araki and saw Araki juggling the ball. He told him what Suguru had written in his diary about Araki. However, Araki was very angry and said that Suguru looked down on him and that the reason he quit soccer was because of Suguru. Then all the members of SC started practicing. The first exercise was to fight for the ball in the beach. Each team was divided into five people. SC was different from FC because they couldn't use a regular field. The rules of beach soccer were also different. There was only one goal. The defender who stole the ball would kick it into the sea and then they would switch sides and start over. The white team started. Kakaru admitted that it was really difficult to run. His pass was also intercepted, and he also failed immediately. So they switched sides. The red team continued. This time Kakaru tried to block and get the ball but still couldn't. He also witnessed the skills of Makoto and Kiribayashi, which made him feel that this team was great. The first half ended, and everyone went for a break. Makoto discovered Araki. He knew that Kakaru had caught Araki's attention. Nekoto knew that Kakaru had a lot of potential, but Araki realized that Kakaru had a big weakness and was an incomplete genius. Nekoto said that everyone wanted Araki to come back. He knew that everyone had weaknesses, but if they came together, they would cover each other's weaknesses. But Araki still had no intention of coming back. Nekoto didn't understand why Araki always wore soccer shoes. It was very similar to Kakaru, so Nekoto really wanted Araki to come back. Koda had passed the entrance exam to SC. He said that their training method was very harsh. Oda came to inform Koda that SC would have a practice match. He also invited Kakaru to watch. Then the practice match took place, Araki also came. He told about last year's match. SC was a team that took the initiative, just like the match that was happening. SC used players with physical strength to increase their potential. Even though it was monotonous, they didn't get bored. In the second half, they went all out and won 5 for SC. Last year, Araki lost 4 minus 1. 
Araki said that he couldn't pass the ball through their defense. Kakaru told Araki to create it and do it together. Araki remembered Sugiru's words and left. Nana knew that Kakaru's emotions had affected him and now they could only rely on himself. Two weeks later, the decisive match came, and both teams were ready. SC's lineup was still made up of tall players. Makoto didn't want anyone to get hurt because their team only had 11 players. Then both teams entered the field, all ready to take their positions. The match officially started. SC's Sawamura knew that Araki wasn't in the lineup. The ball was passed to Hino easily thanks to Kakaru attracting the defenders. But in front of Hino was Takashi, forcing him to pass the ball back to Mikoto. Nekoto threw a long pass. Kakaru was ready to receive the ball, but the opponent had already intercepted the ball. Oda decided to throw a long pass. Makoto wanted everyone to retreat to defense immediately. Takashi pretended to jump to fool the opponent. Pudo got the ball and shot. Goalkeeper Kiribayashi touched the ball, but the ball continued to go towards the goal. Luckily, Kakaru cleared the ball in time. 20 minutes of the first half had passed. Takashi won the ball in the air again. Kakaru continued to retreat to defend. Since the two strikers had retreated to defend, the FC players were now starting to get tired. The coach knew that because of the absence of King Araki, their team had a big hole. SC took a corner kick, Oda moved back to follow the ball, and then shot. SC officially took the lead. Kakaru thought it was his fault. The match continued, Kakaru asked for the ball from Hino. He had to ask for a goal back. He successfully got past an opponent, but couldn't get past Oda. Oda also realized Kakaru's weakness. Then there was a pass up. Kakashi continued to be passed by his teammate. He made a header to score. The first half ended, SC won 2 while FC couldn't score a single goal. Miami had a shoulder injury and the coach didn't want him to continue playing. He wanted the whole team to try to fight with 10 men. Suddenly Kota appeared. He said he had left SC and also wanted to join FC. Kota was immediately accepted. The coach said Kakaru had attracted too much attention. A striker also needed to disappear. This was also what Suguru said. The second half started, SC also changed players. FC also started to change tactics. Another long pass up top. This time Kiribayashi successfully caught the ball. Then there was a throw to Makoto. Oda immediately approached him. FC players tried to find space but were constantly pressed by opponents. Netoba shot but could not score. The ball was bounced to Kakaru's feet. Disappeared for a few minutes, meaning the striker did not touch the ball to avoid attracting attention and suddenly appeared at the crucial moment. Kakaru shot and successfully scored. Everyone celebrated the goal. The coach recognized Kakaru as a pure striker. SC continued to change personnel after the goal. The match continued, FC continued to attack. Kota passed the ball to Kakaru, who shot. The ball bounced back, and Oda got the ball and counterattacked. Kota did not have time to retreat to defend. Oda shot and successfully scored the third goal for SC. Makoto said the match was not over yet, FC was still passive. Everyone was gradually exhausted. Suddenly FC's ace came back, it was Araki. Everyone was surprised by Araki's current appearance. It turned out that Araki had asked the coach to let him back into the team. But the coach refused because of his fat appearance. He asked Araki to lose weight in 10 days if he wanted to join the team. Nakoto was counting on Araki. Araki stole the ball from the opponent and easily passed the opponents. Oda wanted to stop him but failed. The SC goalkeeper rushed out to block Araki, but Araki did not shoot and did a Rabona. The ball went into the goal. The score was now 3 minutes 2. Oda saw that Araki was still as skillful as before. Araki wanted Kakaru to score this time. It took two players to break through the opponent's defense. SC kicked off. Mako cut off the opponent's pass and passed the ball to Kaoru who coordinated with Kota. Kakaru was on the move and asked Kota to pass the ball to him. Kakaru dribbled close to the penalty area and shot. Unfortunately, the goalkeeper pushed the ball out. Everyone was surprised that Kakaru could shoot from a long distance. Araki took a corner kick. SC cleared the ball. Kakaru shot from a long distance with his left foot. But the ball hit a defender and flew out. Everyone was shocked to know that Kakaru's left foot was stronger than his right foot. Then there was a long distance shot taken by Araki. But the ball went over the crossbar. Araki and Kakaru started shooting from a long distance. Kakaru asked for the ball again. This time he decided not to shoot and passed it to Araki. Then he moved. Araki made a beautiful pass back to Kakaru. Kakaru entered the penalty area and faced the goalkeeper. He shot to tie the score. The coach realized that Kakaru and Araki had been shooting from a long distance to make SC's defenders defend high, leaving the penalty area empty. Oda realized this problem and did not want to follow the coach's plan anymore. 
FC continued to attack, a pass to Soamura, but Matoba blocked it. Oda appeared to respond immediately. The two sides were fighting fiercely for the ball in the midfield. Akira realized that Oda had not followed the coach's tactics anymore. But Araki would not let him pass. A one-on-one -on -one match between the two aces. Oda passed the ball with his heel, surprising Araki. Kayuji received the ball and shot, but it was blocked by Horikawa. The referee started looking at the clock. FC counterattacked. Araki received the ball. Kakaru felt his heart beat louder. Araki passed the ball to Metoba, who shot. The ball bounced off the crossbar. Kakaru turned and did an overhead, but goalkeeper Tadu blocked it. The ball was still in play, but it stopped before the goal line. The match ended after this situation. Both teams officially tied. Nakoto recognized that Kakaru's shot was very beautiful. Oda admits that Araki is very good. If he had played from the beginning, SC would have lost. Araki suddenly collapsed, saying that he was very hungry. Everyone had a good laugh. Buwaki Sensei went to find Kodo Sensei to ask for a favor. Buwaki planned to disband the FC team and asked Kondo to accept all his players because all the players on both sides were good players. Buwaki said that Kakaru is Suguru's younger brother with a school that has no achievements, but currently has a very magical group of players, so if they can combine them all, the championship will no longer be a dream. If they insist on having the winning team as the representative, the talent of the losing team will also be wasted. So Awaki asked Kondo Sensei to reconsider. He recalled that when Awaki founded FC, his team lost to Awaki's team of 15 people even though his team had 60 members. Awaki then went on to the next round in the preliminaries. Kondo thought that if he had withdrawn then Inishima would have won. He decided that after today SC would also disband. A new team would be formed. He still wanted Iwaki to be the coach, this was his way of making up for his mistake. Iwaki Sensei was very touched by this, and now it was not SC or FC but an Ishima High School. Then both of them announced to everyone that from now on they would all be teammates. The next day, Iwaki Sensei spoke again about taking the position of coach, and Kondo Sensei would be the advisor for the whole team. Saomura would be the captain, Oda and Makoto would be the vice captains. Iwaki Sensei wanted the whole team to just treat everything as normal, and especially to play soccer together happily. But then the two teams could not get along in the way they practiced. Awaki Sensei knew for sure that this would happen. Nana was wondering about being invited to play for Nades Hiko Japan because everyone needed Nana's strength. But Nana was still hesitant. Ishiki knows that Nana has given up soccer for more than a year and has no hope left. But Nana says she hasn't given up yet. Ishiki wants Nana to think carefully before deciding to return. The SC members are surprised when the team practices at the beach. Kondo Sensei is quite surprised by the way FC practices. Iwaki sees this place as ideal for practice because it can help the body relax more. Araki comes, but this time he is fat again. Nakoto was furious with his fat belly, and the group tied him up. Oda is also angry when Araki is fat again. The team divides into four groups and practices for 20 minutes. After that practice, Araki returns and wants to recharge his energy. But unexpectedly Nana and Kakaru are in his house. He is a bit shocked when they both eat his food. He also doesn't understand why his mother let them both in. Nana said she came to help Araki with his diet, so his mother immediately agreed. Both of them also asked for permission to leave. Araki asked Kakaru to take care of himself first because if he lost the ball so easily in such a direct confrontation, he would not be able to be a striker. There was a flaw in Kakaru's dribbling, but Nana was sure that Kakaru would be able to overcome it. Returning home, Nana asked Captain Ishiki for permission to let her play in the next match. The Inishima team started moving to the training camp. Oda was very angry when he saw Araki continuing to eat too much. The 64 members were going to Shizuoka and Araki's food bag was also given. Then everyone went to the resting place. The first half of the match between Nades Hiko Japan and Miami Hurricane had just ended. Nades Hiko was trailing by two goals. Nana came, she apologized for being late, she promised to make up for the lost goals in the second half. Nana officially entered the field with the number 7 jersey. Then the second half began. The opponent wanted to collide with Nana as a greeting. Nana dodged in time and used her technique to advance, passing the opponent's defender alone. Nana dribbled the ball and broke through strongly. Two big defenders decided to block Nana. Nana made a chip shot. The opponent's goalkeeper couldn't touch the ball, so the ball was in the net. The teammates acknowledged Nana was great. Ishiki wanted everyone to try like this and tie the match. The match continued. Nana continued to steal the ball. Nades Hiko Japan started to attack. Nana still held the ball forward. The opponent didn't know what Nana would do and a pass was sent by Nana. 
The ball went straight to Ishiki's position. Another chip shot over the goalkeeper's head and they had the equalizer. The opponent also recognized Nana. Two years ago Nana debuted in the American Premier League and immediately scored a hat trick. But then Nana disappeared. Her nickname was Little Witch. The audience was very excited. The match then went on with a one-sided game. The opponent still couldn't stop Nana. Ishiki shot. The ball bounced out. Nana appeared and volleyed. And the goal came. The match ended. After that, Nana asked for permission to leave immediately. Inishima High School had a practice match with Fujinamiya Boys High School. Fujinamiya underestimated Inishima High School. But after an attack, they changed their minds immediately. Kakaru's group was allowed to enter the field, and he scored a goal. Right after that, the team returned to their lodgings in the evening, and Nana arrived in time. Teacher Awaki wanted the team to do their best in the match tomorrow. Araki was looking forward to a hearty meal but he only received a little rice. Nana didn't allow Araki to eat much after practice, so in the evening, he skipped out on buying noodles and soft drinks. But unexpectedly, the money slot was taped. Nana did it herself, she gave him a bottle of apple juice. But Araki said that he would lose weight to live up to everyone's expectations. He told Nana to leave the apple juice here, and he would throw it away himself. But in fact, he drank it as soon as Nana left. Nana came back and said that it was an herbal laxative, which was good for dieting and constipation. Then everyone took a bath. When everyone knew Nana was alone in the bathroom, Araki decided to peep on her for revenge. The other boys agreed. Surprisingly, Koda was already waiting outside with a modern spyglass. Even though Kakaru tried to stop them, he still followed them. Koda said that each of them only had 10 seconds to look at her. Suddenly, Oda found out, causing them to panic and run away. Nana opened the door when she heard the noise, and Oda was hit in the face with a chair. The next day, the first years had a joint practice with a girls' team, which made the boys extremely excited. The boys didn't focus on getting the ball and just wanted to hug the girls. But Kakaru knew that they wouldn't be able to catch Nana because Nana's technique was very good. Nana easily scored a goal with a chip shot. Everyone acknowledged that Nana was great. At night, Kakaru and Nana still practiced together at the park. Kakaru thought that Nana should play, but he didn't know that Nana was now playing with the Nades Hiko Japan team. Nana realized that Kakaru still couldn't overcome his weakness. If he kept going like this, he definitely wouldn't be able to challenge the world. Nana said Suguru had been doing it since he was 10 years old. The two accidentally bumped into each other, and Nana was on top of him. She asked about the promise they made to Suguru. It was, that one day, the three of them would wear the Japanese team's jersey together. The next day, everyone saw Nana in the newspaper. She was considered the savior of Nades Hiko Japan. And there was also an article about Nana's success in America. Koda didn't know why Nana hid it from everyone. Kakaru realized that he didn't know anything. At the park at night, Nana and Kakaru continued to play soccer. Kakaru asked Nana about the newspaper. Nana said that in America, women's soccer was very popular. She had the support of her teammates and had been recognized. But it had become a burden, making her unable to concentrate on playing anymore. Her parents had returned to Japan, so she returned with them. But when she was accepted into Nades Hiko, that feeling was gone. Nana still wanted to be the manager of the team and the two continued to play soccer together. Araki was still secretly eating cakes and drinking soft drinks even though the tournament was coming. Everyone was about to start practice when Araki arrived and Nana found chocolate still on his mouth. Nana confiscated his bag of food. The SC members were unhappy because Araki was late. Then everyone started practicing. Takeshi was still surpassed by Matoba. Kakaru was focusing too much on the ball. The team started to have conflicts because the SC and FC members could not understand each other's playing style. Araki was tired and wanted to rest. Waki also wanted the team to take a break even though it was a bit early. So all the FC members took a break, but the SC members were unhappy. They were used to the pressure of strict training under Kondo Sensei, and felt that Iwaki Sensei was not serious in training. Iwaki Sensei considered Oda's opinion. Saomura didn't want to practice like this so he asked for permission to leave. The other members did too. That afternoon, Nana and Kakaru went to find Saomura. Kakaru asked Saomura to come back to the team. Saomura apologized for making them both worry, but he couldn't accept Iwaki Sensei's coaching. Today, Saomura's group didn't come. Iwaki Sensei still wanted the team to continue practicing. Kakaru kept looking at the ball. Takashi was still easily defeated. Then there was the combination play of the FC players. Takashi then deliberately fouled Matoba. He apologized and left. The practice match ended. Kakaru went to the hospital for a checkup and the doctor said that his health was very good. 
Dr. Mine gave him a paper about Iraqi and a lot of information about the other teams participating in this tournament, especially Silva, who was playing for Tokyo Academy. Mine knew that he was both Suguru's friend and rival. She didn't know why Silva wanted to play football in Japan. Kakaru didn't know why either and asked for permission to leave. Natoba waited outside, and after yesterday's practice, Takashi didn't come to practice either. Natoba thought that Takeshi might have lost confidence in himself when Metoba kept passing the ball through his legs on purpose. The three of them went to Takashi's house together. His sister said that Takeshi hadn't returned yet. The three of them entered the house and found out that Takashi had many achievements in basketball, but in his third year, he switched to soccer. Takashi's father's company went bankrupt. The family fell into debt, so Takashi gave up basketball. Takashi's younger brother appeared. His name was Takuro, and his younger sister was Chika. Natoba asked why Takashi played soccer. The main reason was because he didn't have to spend money and especially could make money from it. In contrast to basketball, very few people could make money from it. When his family went bankrupt, Takashi wanted to take on the responsibility of supporting his family. So even though he was a good player in the province, Takashi gave up and turned to soccer. Takeshi came home late today because he went to work. Vetoba didn't like Takashi's reason for playing soccer. If you want to play basketball, you should continue playing it no matter what. Kakaru returned home, still thinking about Takashi and feeling grateful to his parents and brother. He went to buy some things and accidentally found Takashi practicing soccer. He called Metoba to come and witness. They both knew that Takashi was practicing at this time to make up for the time he missed at the club. Kakaru realized that Takashi really wanted to play soccer. Metoba rushed into the park to get Takashi's ball, but this time Takashi didn't give the ball to Matoba easily. Kakaru also joined in. Then Nana also showed up, so the four of them had a lot of fun playing soccer together. The next day, only two members of SC came to practice. Kakaru didn't understand what happened to the team, and was forced to find a new captain to lead the team. Everyone chose Makoto as the captain. The SC members practiced by themselves. Kakaru came and said that he came today for something else. He said that starting from today, once a week, the whole team will rent a private stadium to practice. Kakaru wanted the whole team to be there at 6 p.m. so he asked his seniors to come. Kakaru waited, but no one came. Sensei Kondo found Sawamura's group and took them to Kamakura Station. Everyone was surprised to see Iwaki Sensei working at the construction site at night. Kondo Sensei said that Iwaki Sensei wanted the team to experience the feeling of playing on the field, so he tried to rent the city's stadium. But his salary was not enough, so he worked part-time for that reason. Iwaki Sensei had never seen a coach who sacrificed himself for the team like that. He wanted the three of them to understand and create that kind of trust by constantly pursuing their goals. But Sawamura still didn't like the easy excuses he made to Araki and the team. Kondo wanted the three of them to observe whether Iwaki was actually an easygoing person or not. Today, the team went to Kamakura City to compete. Nana felt that something was wrong because Sawamura's group hadn't returned yet. They had also arrived at the stadium, and their opponents were already waiting there. Araki was very confident of victory. The match officially began. Makoto got the ball and was immediately marked by two people, then Metoba successfully passed the opponent. The ball went to Araki. Araki used his technique to dribble past him, and then he shot gently into the opponent's net. The opponent was quite pleased with this. The match continued, and Inishima stole the ball and counterattacked. A combination from the members, the ball was already in the goal. Then it was time for the opponent to get serious. The match continued, one-touch passes were made. Then the opponent continued to coordinate and kick the ball back and forth, and a goal was scored right away. Matoba remembered that number 10 was the top scorer of the Inter-University Tournament last year. He was Heiskawa, and this was the runner-up of the Inter-University Tournament last year, 11 players from Kamakura University. And now the match really started. The SC members also came to watch the match at the request of Kondo Sensei. The score was now 4 minus 2, and everyone was surprised to learn that their opponent was Kamakura University. The team's current weakness was the lack of defensive coordination, and there was no leader. Kondo Sensei knew that the team lacked members to direct the play. The Waki Sensei also knew that because Araki was being tightly marked, the team was now helpless. Inishima relied on passing and individual skills, so when this was blocked, everyone's abilities quickly declined. Araki fell, and Oda was furious because this was what he was talking about. Kondo Sensei thought that Awaki would not replace Araki because he wanted Araki to realize his own weakness. Due to his lack of seriousness throughout junior high school, Araki's heart and lungs could not keep up. 
If he was forced to lose weight suddenly, like the match with SC, Araki would quickly become exhausted. So this would be a plan specifically for Araki. So Awaki could be very generous, but also extremely strict at the moment. Kakaru saw Soamura's group coming, and Inishima decided to counterattack. The ball was passed by Makoto. Kakaru got the ball and shot but failed. The ball bounced back. He continued to make a header and scored a goal. The match ended with a score of 4 minus 3. Araki fainted from exhaustion. Sawamura's group had left. The next morning at school, Kakaru was surprised to see Sawamura's group had returned to practice with the team. Araki wanted to rest, but Oda didn't want that. Oda considered Araki the best of the team, so he didn't want Araki to be like that anymore. Araki then used a water bottle to tease Oda that he was a whale spouting water. So the two chased each other, and in the end, everyone was united. That was why Iwaki Sensei arranged a practice match. But Iwaki knew that everyone had recognized each other's strengths and made up for each other's weaknesses, and those feelings had created the team's unity. The inter-school tournament would begin next week, and Iwaki Sensei introduced a new tactical system, which surprised the whole team. Then Iwaki Sensei began calling out the names of the selected players. Everyone was very happy to have their names called, and Kota was also very happy to have his name called. Kakaru was also officially named in the main squad. When he returned home, Kakaru bragged to his brother that he had done it. He asked his brother to watch over him and promised to do his best. Then the inter-school tournament began. Everyone was ready. 